Good morning. Nine o'clock, we'll um, call today's meeting to order. I'd ask everybody, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With that, please note for the record for the public, there's a copy of the Open Meetings Act here on the north wall of the chambers. In the back, there's an automatic defibrillator if for any reason it's needed for health reasons. Also, uh, if you have any electronic devices, I ask you to mute them, silence them, or turn them off. With that, uh, we will call to order the Board of Equalization meeting. Roll call, please. Commissioner Borgeson? Here. Commissioner Boyle? Here. Commissioner Cavanaugh? Yeah. Commissioner Duda? Here. Commissioner Kraft? Here. Commissioner Morgan? Mr. Chair. Here. Uh, letter A is approval of the minutes of the Board of Equalization meeting held um, Tuesday, October 8th, 2019. Item B is called for a meeting and set Tuesday, October 29th, 2019 as the date for hearings on certified assessments and corrections. What's the will of the board? Second. Motion by Commissioner Boyle, seconded by Commissioner Duda. Please vote. Commissioner Boyle's vote won't appear due to technical difficulties, but he votes yes, as do all the rest of the commissioners. Motion passes 7-0. Item C is citizens' comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on board of equalization matters not listed on the agenda. Are there any citizens' comments at this time? Seeing none, we'll go on to uh, the resolutions, items D, E, F, G, E, and H, with the notes of under item D. Third down, item 19158. Uh, has been asked to be removed, so that uh, will be removed. And with that, is there a motion to approve? Uh, there's a motion by uh, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Boyle to approve items D, E, F, G, H, I, and adjourn. Seconded by Commissioner Duda. Please vote. Chair, I believe there's a typo. Okay. I think that last uh, and item E, 19164, should be Seldon, S E L D I N. Oh, good catch. Clerk, no. Okay. All righty. With that, there's a motion second. Please vote. Motion passes 7 to 0. Uh, with that, we will call to order the Douglas County Board of Commissioners roll call. Commissioner Borgeson? Yeah. Commissioner Boyle? Here. Commissioner Cavanaugh? Here. Commissioner Duda? Here. Commissioner Kraft? Here. Commissioner Morgan? Here. Mr. Chair? Here. Item 1, minutes and claims. Letter A, approval of the minutes of the Board of Commissioners meeting held Tuesday, October 8, 2019. Item B is approval of claims submitted for payment and process through Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019. What's the will of the board? Motion, Motion by Commissioner Boyle. Second. Second by Commissioner Kraft. Please vote. Motion passes 7-0. Item two is the consent agenda. Before we go, there are nine items, but two have been asked to be removed. Item B from the engineer's office has been asked to be removed. Item E, uh, in agreement with the Nebraska Writers Collective Poetry Instructions has asked to be removed to be worked on more. With that, we have seven items. What's the will of the board? Uh, motion by Commissioner Kraft. Second. Second by Commissioner Boyle. Boyle. Commissioner Boyle. Okay, all righty. And uh, Commissioner, Chair Rogers, it was uh, less B and E? Yes. Okay, all right. And Commissioner Boyle has noted his abstention on A. Okay. Uh, with that, we will pull A so that can be abstained on and do A separately. Uh, okay, give us one second. It's okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. With that, we're voting on item C, D, F, G, H, and I in the consent agenda. Please vote. Motion passes 7 to 0. Item A is approval. Item A in the consent agenda is the approval of the annual CPI adjustment to the Pheasant Point landfill rates and adjustment to the liquid base handling rates. What's the will of the board? Moved by Commissioner Dude. Is there a second? Second, second by Commissioner Borgeson. Please vote. I got a question. Um, Commissioner Cavanaugh. Um, 
and I've spoken to the uh, parties are here from waste management. Uh, I, I just wanted to, for the record, get something on in terms of what we're doing here. I see Ken Holmes is here. Maybe he could help us with that. Um, to allow the public to understand what this does, perhaps you could give us a quick synopsis. Yes. Uh, good morning, Commissioner Ken Holm, Environmental Services Director. Uh, let me pull this up here. Um, each year, the contract with waste management dictates that that we adjust the rates based on the uh, the Midwest region's uh, consumer price index, uh, index, and waste management submits that information to us in October. Uh, the rate, new rates are adjusted accordingly, uh, according to the formula that's identified in the contract. And those new rates go into effect on December 1st of each year, and that being the anniversary date of the opening of the, of the landfill. So that, that's the first part that's happening. Uh, the second part in the resolution today also addresses the rates for the liquid uh, disposal of liquids and the solidification process that waste management has to do uh, to accept those into the landfill. And that justification is, is because of the uh, significantly increased cost for waste management for the materials that are used in the solidification process. And so what we're asking for, in addition to the CPI adjustments that are normally done on an annual basis, also asking for those, those particular three rates, the, the liquid rate, which is uh, uh, an over-the-scale rate, uh, bulk rate, and then also the drums uh, that are uh, the liquid that comes in in drums and the liquids that comes in in the 250-gallon uh, totes. Uh, those particular rates are also adjusted. And for those particular drums and totes, uh, those are special handling rates, and the county also gets an increased uh, adjustment for that as well. So that will entertain any other questions you may have. Sure. So uh, built into the contract are uh, these consumer price index uh, adjustments that happen on an annual basis. And if I read this correctly, that CPI for this year is 1.3 percent? Correct. Okay. And that increase goes to waste management, is that correct? That, that increase uh, is, is across all of the scale rates uh, as, as they were laid out uh, back in, in March. Right. Yeah. And, and those are the attached <coughs> special handling fees? Uh, those are both the scale rates and the special, the special handling fees are not subject to the, to the CPI. The only thing that's being adjusted on the special uh, handling rates are the, the two liquid rates. Okay. So the scale rate descriptions include municipal residential solid waste, commercial collection vehicle, municipal solid waste, commercial collection vehicle, construction and demolition waste, asbestos, petroleum and contaminated soil, special waste and other, asbest other than asbestos, coal-fired power plant combustion residue liquids for special handling, transfer trailer municipal solid waste, and transfer trailer construction and demolition salvage site waste. Correct. Okay. Those are subject to the 1.3 CPI, 1.3 percent CPI increase. All of them except the, the coal-fired power plant combustion residue because that was, that particular rate was established by board resolution separately and it is not subject to the CPI. Okay. And that residue essentially comes from the Omaha Public Power District coal-fired uh, plants, is that correct? Uh, I believe that could come from anywhere. I don't believe it's, uh, right. I have to go back and look at the, at sure. the particular resolution, but I, I don't believe it specifies that it, it only come from a particular place. Okay. Bottom line on this increase, in addition to uh, resulting in an increase of uh, revenue to Waste management, it, does it reflect an increase of re revenue to Douglas County? For the special handling rates, yes, it does. And do you know what that amount is? Uh, hold on a second. 
the new rates for uh, drums or liquids, the Douglas County would get $14.65 per drum, and the 250-gallon totes for liquid, the county would get $48.18 per ton, or excuse me, for, per unit, and compare that to existing, and uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have the existing Douglas County rate right here in front of me. Okay. Uh, but it is, it is a, a fairly substantial increase. Yeah, and that's what I'm yeah. trying to get at. So if you could provide us with that mm -hmm. number in an aggregate right. form, I mean, that's fine to know the number for a drum, but what's the number to Douglas County? That'll be good. Uh, I'm, we're out of time, but I'm going to come back. I gotta you got another five questions. if you want it on. Okay. Um, additionally, on the um, scale rate mm -hmm. CPI increase, same question. What's the increase to um, Douglas County by increasing the scale rates per ton? Uh, those, I believe, will stay the same. Um, I believe those will all stay the same. Okay. And then the increase in revenue to uh, waste management reflected here. If you don't have it, I mean, please get it to me just so that we can get our heads around what are we talking about in terms of this 1.3% increase equals in dollars. Can okay. You, you don't have that. I, I, I do not have okay. that. Okay. No. If you could no. provide that, that would be um, helpful. And um, Commis Commissioner, I, I guess the one thing I would add is is that that will be based on a certain number of tons of material, and I, I'll I'll provide ba based based on a comparison from last year to this year. Sure. I'll I'll provide that number. That may not be the number that we end up with. I understand it's that. an estimate, but okay. you know the estimate's okay. better than nothing. Um, okay. I do have a question for our friends from Waste Management. Based on the new municipal contract that Omaha just executed, uh, and if, if they can give us a second. Uh, morning. Morning. Ryle Palmer with Waste Management, 13505 North 216th Street. Thank you. Bryce Thompson with Waste Management. Good. Gentlemen, thanks for coming down. Um, we're in the lead up to a new contract with the City of Omaha in terms of solid waste uh, disposal. And that's going to increase the tonnage, I believe, uh, to the Pheasant Point uh, site, to you, um, because there's going to be at least a partial combination of solid waste and yard waste in that new contract. Is that your understanding? Based on how, they're <coughs> how waste management's collecting it right now, some of the city has already co collected, so it will have a slight increase. I don't know how to uh, give a number right now on how it'll impact year over year, uh, but it would have a, a slight increase for the landfill as a, in 2021. And, and, you know, we're dealing in pr predictions here, like <laughs> Mr. Holm uh, indicated, it's difficult to say it's going to be X number of tons are, are uh, going forward. But <clears throat> one of the things that we talked about beforehand was this uh, commingling of solid waste and yard waste will have um, the effect of uh, increasing um, the methane coming off of our landfill. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And we have a methane capture uh, method underway now. Is that right? Correct. Right. And so my question, I guess, and what we talked about before is <clears throat> how is that going to be affected, enhanced, impaired by this new uh, commingling stream? Just going from past studies and stuff, adding that to the landfill increases methane production. So that would allow us to increase what we're already doing out there as far as producing electricity and stuff in the future. And in order to capture as much of that uh, as possible, um, when the, the waste comes in, it's, it's dumped in, I think you call them cells, is that, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and before a cell is actually full and capped, 
Are you able to capture methane before it's actually completed the yes. cell? Okay. So we have been able to capture m most of the methane generated, or what would you estimate? Yes. Okay. And the end user of the methane that we capture is who? Right now we are burning it in a power plant that produces electricity in a partnership with OVPD. Okay. And uh, do we use all of the methane that we produce? Not all of it right at the moment, no. What do we do with the excess methane? It, it, at this point, it has to be burned off. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. There's a motion second for item A. Please vote. Commissioner, a motion passes. Commissioner Boyle abstains. All our commissioners voting yes. Item three is recognition and proclamations. Uh, item A is a recognition of county employee Dave Brennan, who is retiring from Douglas County Clerk Controller's Office after 31 years of service to the citizens of Douglas County. Uh, Mr. Clerk. Dan Ash, Douglas County Clerk. Um, so yesterday I met with a friend of mine, and there this individuals not one to complain a lot or talk about people negatively, but uh, it's not a county employee. <laughs> but uh, they were just complaining about things going on at the office that they work in, and uh, that's just their thing. I was like, man, I'm so happy I'd never have to deal with stuff like that. And uh, Dave is, uh, I guess it's fortunate to feel sad sometimes because, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to work with someone like him, uh, just such a great teammate, and just the patience that this guy has, uh, you know, I'm sure anybody who works at dot-com could probably tell you that they give a lot of calls, not that uh, Dave's obviously not dot-com, but he's, you know, IT related, and you hear from a lot of people where it's the systems not doing this or the computers not doing this when really uh, most of the time it's a user error. It's not, it's not, the, not the system, uh, but Dave always uh, handles it well. Um, there's so many situations where he's literally the smartest person and uh, he doesn't let that get to his head. Um, so. Anyway, I'm going to miss him. And uh, here's the, uh, I'll read the resolution we have. Whereas Douglas County, Nebraska recognizes that its employees are the county's most important asset and resource for providing quality service to the citizens of Douglas County. And whereas on August 16, 1988, Dave Brennan began working as a temporary employee in the Douglas County Clerk Comptroller's Office. And whereas through his Hard work and dedication, Dave better advanced from a temporary employee to a vehicle department of Title Operator 1 on September 13, 1989, to a vehicle department of Title Operator 2 on June 1, 1990, to payroll specialist on April 25, 1994, to auditor in charge on June 2, 1997, and finally to Oracle Functional Lead, a position he held from September 23rd, 2004, up until his retirement, and whereas during his time as Oracle Functional Lead, although Dave Brennan was an employee of the County Clerk Comptroller's Office, he provided Oracle assistance to employees from every Douglas County Department, dot com, the Omaha Douglas Public Building Commission, and the City of Omaha, and whereas Dave Brennan was consistently helpful, positive, and professional, and regularly made himself available to coworkers, consultants, and others when assistance was needed even when it wasn't related to his job duties, and whereas Dave Brennan always performed his duties with the intention of doing what was best for both the operations of Douglas County government and the citizens of Douglas County, and whereas Douglas County wishes to recognize Dave Brennan on his retirement after 31 years of dedicated service. Now therefore be resolved by this Board of County Commissioners, Douglas County, Nebraska, that this board hereby recognizes Dave Brennan for his dedicated and outstanding service to the residents and employees of Douglas County and thankfully presents this resolution as testimony thereof dated this 15th day of October 2019. Still motion. Motion by Commissioner Boyle, second by Commissioner Kavanaugh. Commissioner Kavanaugh. Thank you. <coughs> and uh, Dan, thanks for uh, 
bringing this to us. I've known Dave Brennan, I guess, most of his life. I'm older than he is. And uh, I'm really uh, grateful for his uh, dedicated public service over the last uh, three plus decades. He's done a spectacular job, and he's a credit to us all. I want to thank him uh, personally on behalf of Douglas County as well uh, for the great service that he's performed. Uh, his uh, selfless and largely thankless uh, dedication to uh, the job is something that, you know, I've observed um, for decades. He's always been, uh, as you indicated, a, a smiling face and a, and a willing helper on uh, anybody's uh, uh, request and uh, uh, very, very competent. Credit to your staff. Uh, I wanted to uh, remember uh, my brother Tom who hired uh, Dave, uh, I think, right out of school. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that he's been with the county for most of his uh, working career. Yeah. And that's been a great, great benefit to, to us and the people of Douglas County. So I wish him well. Uh, he's got a great family. and. Uh, he, uh, he's hopefully going to enjoy a well-deserved retirement, maybe take a trip back to RD with his father and, and see the Emerald Isle with him. Uh, so congratulations, Dave. Commissioner Boyle. Well, he, I, uh, Jim, I have to tell you, I'm, I am older than you, and I knew his father and mother very well. <laughs> <laughs> they lived down the hill from uh, Cathedral, and uh, they lived next door to uh, my uh, brother-in-law and sister-in-law, uh, Jim and Patty McGuire, so that's pretty good for neighbors. Uh, anyway, he is really terrific, and um, um, I've known him all of his life, too, when he was a kid in the house, you know, because the Brennans used to babysit for us and all that. So anyway, wish him well. And uh, I have a question, though. How come all these people so much younger than me are retiring? <laughs> <laughs> I really wish him well. He was always, uh, uh, you know, in the spirit of uh, your office, the way you run it. And uh, I can tell when I go down there and when I talk to people what's going on, and, and you're continuing the tradition uh, that Tom had and uh, really going to town. Little, a little tidbit, I have my daughter call, she says, what are all these little flashes of brain things? I said, well, I was out at the Boys Town opening for uh, the psychiatric unit for the children, and one of the doctors I met and everything, and his last name was Spellman, and Walt Spellman was his dad, and of course he's kind of cute. So cool, it really was great. He came up, Walt Spellman was my dad, and I said, oh my God, that's terrific. So anyway, uh, I just thought I'd pass that on, but uh, wish him well, and uh, tell him I'll be seeing him out at the Brazen Head, okay? All right. Great. Commissioner Governor. Thank you. Well, Mike, <laughs> I know that you're older than me, uh, but I can remember uh, Dave as a child uh, when his father uh, played with the Turfman yeah. as the, uh, in the house band at Duffy's Tavern uh, <laughs> back in the day, and uh, Pete and Liz Brennan were... Uh, a great couple, and, and certainly Dave's a credit to them both. Uh, I, uh, I, I look forward to, to seeing Pete, too, and uh, he's, he's the, the fellow who was born in RD, and I hope that Dave gets back there with him one more time uh, now that he's retired. So, thanks. Well, if I may, uh, those were the days when I was drinking, so I don't remember that too much. <laughs> <laughs> with that, there is a, a motion a second. Please vote. <laughs> Get him a tape of that. <laughs> I vote yes. Uh, motion passes 7 to 0. Item B is a resolution recognizing the Douglas County Clerk Comptroller, Dan Esch, and several staff members for efforts to help Douglas County earn its 15th consecutive certification of achievement, an excellence in finance reporting, and its 10th consecutive award of outstanding achievement in popular finance report. Um, is there a motion from the board? A motion by Commissioner Boyle, second by Commissioner Cavanaugh. Uh, please, oh, please vote. Please. Uh, motion, just, motion passes seven to zero, and uh, thank you. <laughs> I just want to say this is, uh, as I was saying earlier, this is a, it's an office that's run very well, and we're very fortunate. Uh, we have, a, I think, a, a real group of uh, professional people running these offices. We're very lucky because you're elected, and sometimes that doesn't happen, you know. So anyway, I really congratulate you. You're running a terrific shop and um, uh, very useful to me. Um, and I, the data you provide is very helpful, particularly in budget time. So congratulations. You des you've earned it. Commissioner Kavanaugh. Thanks. Um, I'd just briefly like to uh, 
read the resolution into the record and then thank a couple people uh, as well. Um, resolved, whereas it is truly re a, a truly remarkable achievement for Douglas County to be awarded for its excellence in financial reporting for more than a decade, and whereas thanks to the dil diligent work and dedication of Douglas County Clerk Comptroller Dan Esch and Clerk Comptroller's Finance Division and many other Douglas County employees, Douglas County continues to set the the high bar for interpreting complicated fiscal details into easy to understand information for the public and for county departments and officials. And whereas in September, county officials were notified that Douglas County earned its 15th consecutive Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting and its 10th consecutive Award for Outstanding Achievement in Popular finance, Financial Reporting. And whereas Douglas County is the only county in Nebraska to have earned these recognitions. And whereas these awards come from the Government Finance Officers Association, which represents public finance off office officials throughout the United States and Canada and has a mission to advance excellence in public finance. And whereas these awards highlight Douglas County's willingness to go beyond the minimum requirements of generally accepted accounting principles and prepare a comprehensive annual financial report which displays the spirit of transparency and full disclosure, and whereas without the work and cooperation of every county office and department, these achievements would not be possible, and whereas these awards are a reflection of the hard work of many Douglas County staff members and their commitment to doing the very best for taxpayers of Douglas County. Now, therefore, be it resolved by this Board of County Commissioners, Douglas County, Nebraska, that this board hereby recognizes Douglas County Clerk Comptroller Dan Esch and several Douglas County staff members for their outstanding efforts to help Douglas County earn its 15th consecutive Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting and its 10th consecutive Award for Outstanding Achievement in Popular Financial Reporting dated this 15th of October 2019. And I'd just like to note that among those um, county staff members of the Douglas County Clerk Comptroller's Office, our Chief Deputy uh, Sherry Larson, uh, Jody Campbell, Lori Conway, uh, Don Honig, uh, and uh, Seminole Gates Colbert, and Heather Jenkins. And I want to thank them each personally for their uh, dedication to financial excellence. The job that the clerk comptroller does uh, in terms of making a really hard thing understandable is remarkable. Even I can understand the county budget. It's taken me a few years, but thanks to the education that I've received at the uh, uh, clerk comptroller's office, I, I can parse my way through through a very, very complicated thing, and, and I want to commend Dan Esch for his dedication to uh, that transparency. Uh, you're truly a remarkable public servant. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. With that, we'll go on to uh, item four, which is citizens' comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on board of commissioners-related items not listed on the agenda. Are there any citizens' comments? All right. Item five, presentation. Uh, letter A is the annual update from the Omaha Public Library. We have the director here with us, and uh, I'd like to ask her to come. She reached out to me for this, and I um, gladly look forward to what she's saying. And before she gets there, uh, for those that may not know, I want to ask Commissioner Dude if he can give us a history of our tie to the library since it was his effort there. Sure. Th thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, many years ago, uh, the city of Omaha used to give free library services to all residents of the county in exchange for, uh, it, was, it had to do with the jail, with, with the city not having to pay the, the certain rate of the jail, and there was nothing in it for the library. They got no money out of it, and, and they threatened to uh, put in a $60 user fee on all non-city residents at one point. It got a little bit ugly about 20, 25 years ago. But we sat down with all of the libraries in the county, all the librarians, and worked out what I think is a, a very good deal. Uh, in fact, it's been, you can only make a 10-year in a local agreement, and this thing's rolled over twice with no, no changes to it. It's, it's uh, still in its original form. Where those of us in unincorporated Douglas County 
uh, we pay the same amount for library services that a resident of Omaha pays. We, we take it and benchmark it the following year if, if it figures out that the city's budget is $25 for every resident of the city for library services, then we will the following year go backwards and say, okay, here's the population of unincorporated Douglas County to achieve $25 per resident. Here's what the tax rate's going to have to be. And then we have a formula to divvy it out between all of the libraries in the county, Bennington, uh, Valley, Ralston, they all get some too, although Omaha gets over 90% of it. So, uh, and it's been a very good arrangement. Uh, I had, I've, I've never, I only had two complaints when we put it in from two farmers. One of them was my father. Uh, and we've had no more complaints since then. It's been a, a great deal, and, and I appreciate the, the service. We actually formed a committee to review the services that citizens of unincorporated Douglas County were receiving to make sure that we were getting good services. The committee never met. We <laughs> never had to meet because the services were always so good. So thank you. Thank you. Um, good morning. Thank you for having me here today, and thank you for your ongoing support. I've handed out copies of our annual report from last year, and I'm just going to give you a sense of what your money is paying for. Um, we serve about 57% of Douglas County, which is pretty impressive for a library, um, and that includes um, all our cardholders and their active users. Last year, we circulated 3.4 million items and we had 1.7 million visitors through our doors. We've been working very hard the past couple of years on our strategic plan and a shift to make our services much more patron-centric than they have been in the past. And some of the things we've done to make that happen um, is to welcome back as many library users as we can, and we've been doing a Food for Fines program that we will now be doing for the next five years uh, through um, a resolution passed by the City Council. Uh, the past two years, we've raised over 8,000 pounds of food and welcomed back uh, approximately 1,200 library card users who hadn't been able to come to the library because of their fines. So we were very happy to do that. We've been working with Together Omaha and the Heart Ministries and donating all the food we raised to their food pantry. Um, for children, we have the opportunity for children to volunteer at the library to work down their fine or to read books at the library and read down their fines. And those are ongoing programs as well. We've instituted a partner pass program which allows people with a library card to check out a pass to the zoo, um, Boritz and Gardens, the Omaha Children's Museum, or Fontenelle Forest. And Heartland B-Cycle has also donated passes, so if people want to try out one of their bikes, they can check out a free pass from the library to do that. Um, we're hoping to continue that program. The zoo has been a really strong partner. They've all been very strong partners, and they all offer the passes free of charge to the library card holder. So it gives every resident of Douglas County the opportunity to see the wonderful attractions that are in the area and to bring their kids and afford that, to do that. Uh, Miss, I'm sorry, would you like to state your name for the record? Oh, I'm sorry. Laura Marlene, I'm the director of Omaha Public Library. Thank you. Um, we've recently implemented digital cards, so people who can't get to a branch um, or just don't have the time can apply online, be verified immediately, and get an e-card, which they can use to check out e-books, e audiobooks, get free music from Freegal, use any of our databases or um, our uh, test databases and uh, download magazines and that's all free of charge to residents of Douglas County. We've been able to leverage private money, <coughs> excuse me, just getting over a cold, with public money and we did some renovations at the Washington branch recently with the support of the Dixon Family Foundation and with the support of city facilities. So the Dixon Family Foundation gave us $50,000 and we talked with city facilities and they were able to provide 25,000 and we were able to put in new flooring, move spaces around, uh, make it more accommodating for families and um, create a new teen space with computers that makes things more accessible for them. We've also been able to do upgrades to the Millard Branch Children's Area that's been very popular 
And next year in our fundraising, we are hoping to do more of the children's spaces at our other branches. Um, with technology, we've been able to connect all our branches to fiber. That was about a year and a half ago. And we've applied through E-Rate and are getting um, one gig of broadband through .com with Cox and with Network Nebraska. Network Nebraska provides a backbone of broadband service to colleges, universities, and schools across the state. We've also been able to add some new equipment. Um, oops, it's not as bright. That's a charging locker. So if people come in with their devices, a small tablet or a phone, they can um, set the locker to whatever um, password they'd like, plug their phone in, and lock it and leave it until they come back and it's charged. So all of our buildings are older and we don't have outlets where it would be really convenient so people don't have to sit on the floor by an outlet waiting for their device to charge. They can leave it there. We've bought eight more of those that are going to be distributed to the branches this week. One of the other things we've been able to add, this is um, a laptop kiosk. There's a camera in the top that takes a photograph of the person checking it out. They scan their library card and it releases one of those devices and they can use it anywhere in the building. Um, computer labs really are a waste of space at this point. People don't want classes. They want an answer to whatever question they have. They don't want to sit through an hour long class to do that. So we're going to be getting rid of a lot of our labs to free up that space for meeting rooms. And these devices can really make a difference because then a person can set up their workspace wherever it's most comfortable for them. So we're hoping to add these, especially at the new, um, the new branch in Southwest Omaha. We did um, a facility survey in 2017 where we asked the patrons who use the library and anybody really to come to our website or come to a branch and fill out the survey and tell us what they like about the library service and what they'd like to see us improve on. And largely people want traditional library services. They want more materials, um, plenty of story times, programs they can bring their kids to, places that their kids can be in the summer when school's out. So we picked three of the service priorities that the public identified. And we've been restructuring our strategic plan around those priorities. People have asked for more collections, more technology, and a focus on more literacy-based programs. So we're in the process of developing how that'll look for us for the next three years. And we're going to maintain that relationship through surveys with our patrons to make sure we're staying on track. Um, it's very important for me to make sure that we're serving our patrons well because that's our customer base. And we turn to them to make sure they're getting the things they need. It's been a little more challenging um, with publishers and especially ebooks, but we're working hard to make sure that we can still meet the needs of the community in spite of the publishers and the changes they've been making. Did you have any questions of me? Um, Commissioner Kavanaugh. Thank you. And uh, thanks for this great report. Um, you folks do um, super work. I, I've got to say I'm a regular uh, user of your services. The uh, Benson Library is our, our neighbor in our office building in, in Benson. Uh, and um, Karen Peach, who's the director there, does a, a great job for the, the library. And um, I use it all the time. Um, our kids are, are big readers and, and uh, participate in uh, the uh, great Omaha Public Library programs. Uh, we have um, been uh, supporters of the uh, Friends of the Omaha Public Library. My colleague, uh, Michael O'Hara, serves on that board. And um, my wife is particularly grateful to you because it allows us to take the many excess books out of our house <laughs> that she's constantly looking to get rid of and give them a new home uh, at the Omaha Public Library. And I'd urge everybody to participate in that program. Great service that you provide because 
Um, there are a lot of people who, once they read a book, they really have no use for it, but uh, the Omaha Public Library will take those off your hands and, and give them a, a, a new, new home and a new use. So I just wanted to say congratulations on, on the super job that, that you do. I notice in here that uh, the many, many supporters and uh, partners that uh, uh, the Omaha Public Library has uh, throughout the community. And I'd particularly like to note the participation of the Hawks Foundation because we have a representative of Tanaska, Mr. Perry Nealon, here today. And we thank the, uh, the, the Hawks Foundation and all the other uh, local partners that we have for, for their support. And uh, they help us do a, a great job. So congratulations. Keep it up. Thank Is you. it my understanding that there's a new library uh, under construction or about to be constructed in southwest Omaha? Yes, there are CIP funds to build a new branch, and the 13th branch will be located on the same property as the Horizon High School, which is at 210 in Q. Um, they were generous enough to offer their property if we build four classrooms onto the building so that they would ha be able to use that as well. So we're partnering with Millard Public Schools and Metro Community College and we're hoping to build a library soon. Um, the Friends have donated funds to allow us to hire a building consultant, and we've been working with her to outline what we want the space to look like and what sort of programs we would like in the library. And um, she's already been here for one visit, and we had a community forum at the Horizon High School to talk to people in that neighborhood to see what they want in their new library. So we're very excited about that. And have you broken ground on that project? No, not yet. When's it scheduled to go under construction? Um, the funds release in January, and we still need to have a contract with Miller Public Schools and write the RFP. So we're hoping sometime in 2020 we'll be able to break ground and get started. Well, as a guy who grew up on Q Street, although <laughs> considerably east of where you're talking about. I'm glad to see that uh, the Omaha Public Library Network is expanding and modernizing. That's a great, mm -hmm. great bit of news. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Boyle. I want to congratulate you on uh, your work. You're a wonderful addition to uh, our uh, city. And um, I've had, uh, you were kind enough to help me uh, view the fireworks once. I don't want to disclose the <laughs> secret place you let me uh, and my family join. But anyway, it was very kind of you. Um, I um, want to ask a couple questions about um, access to the library by our youth center and also the adult uh, correction facility. Uh, do you have a relationship with them anyway online or anything? I know it's always, you have to be very cautious when people who are um, under lock, I guess, to have access to computers, but it can be limited. Do you have any relationship with those facilities? We've, we've done story, um, <clears throat> we've done book clubs with different groups um, at Boys Town and at um, the juvenile facility. Okay. We have an outreach group that works from the Community Engagement Center, and they will partner with um, the Sherwood Foundation. They work through the after-school program that's now run by the Collective for Youth. Okay. And we'll be increasing the number of book clubs we do with that group because they've been so successful. Good. Okay, I appreciate that. How about the, the adult facility? Any relationship with them? Um, not at this time. Okay, that's fine. And lastly, I want to ask about the uh, Croc facility. Do you have uh, any? Do you have any relationship with the South Omaha, uh, the Croc Center, Salvation? Um, we've done work with them in the past, but nothing recently. Okay. Um, that branch in particular, our librarians there work with the neighborhood quite a bit. Yeah, I know that. Um, primarily with literacy programs right. in ESL. Well, I really congratulate you. You've done a terrific job, and I, I do notice I, um, uh, every time there's a something in the World Herald about the uh, libraries and they put in the Washington branch. I send them a text and I said, it's, no, it's not the Washington branch, it's the Charles B. Washington branch because that's not George's place, it's Charlie, Charlie Washington's <laughs> house. So anyway, I appreciate you referring it, although in your comments you did call it the Washington branch, I'll forgive you. But anyway, <laughs> but I never I'll hear anybody that. refer to the W. Dale Clark as the Clark Library, you know, so it's just one of those things. I'm a fetish about it. Anyways, he was a great guy and I had the pleasure of breaking all the rules and getting it named after him, so <laughs> that's why I bring it up. Thanks, you're really doing a terrific job. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Commissioner Kraft. Yes, uh, Laura, yes, you're doing a good job. I get all your emails. <coughs> I thank you for them. Excuse me. <coughs> Clear my throat there. Um, I've been working with handicapped people recently. The visually impaired. Mm -hmm. Do you have any special services other than Braille books for the visually impaired, they want to go into a website or something? 
We have a um, computer set up downtown that has the JAWS program, which reads websites to the visually impaired. And only downtown, though? Um, right now, only downtown. We haven't had um, anybody request it el elsewhere, but I would be happy to install a machine at another brand. And are those machines expensive? Yes, the software is. Um, do, do you need a software for e program for each one? Yes. What does that cost? Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I think the last time we bought the software, it was a few thousand dollars okay. per license. And the next question I have is, do you have somebody who can sign for the deaf at each of the branches? Sign, sign language. Oh, or somebody um, who is deaf and hard of hearing. We do have somebody on staff who signs, and we have access to different people throughout the city and the county who provide signing. Okay. And interpretation, you use that phone calling when you need it? The dial-in um, services? Yes, we do have that set up. Um, again, those resources are available. They unfortunately just don't get a lot of use. Yeah, and they may not get a lot of use because I have a feeling a lot of people don't know about them, which is why I decided to bring them out today. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Even though there are very few people here, we have a few more people who watch us online mm -hmm. and on live streaming TV. So, um, to me, the libraries have always had a special place. They were a place of refuge when I was young, a place to study uh, before I went to work, after school and before I went to work, and saved me from getting beat up many a time. That's when the library was right across the street and I went to Central. <laughs> so I really have a fond spot in my heart for the libraries. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Borgson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for being here today. Um, and I just flipped through this very quickly, but mm -hmm. there was or is there um, where which branches are your busiest branches? Do you have that? No, we only have totals. Okay. But um, we count use on different factors. It's not just the number of materials circulated at a branch. Some branches we don't circulate as much but people are there frequently to use the computers or read the newspaper. Can you, um, at another time, you don't have to do it right now, but provide me with that. Mm -hmm. And then um, with the new branch, I've talked to several people about that. And can you put the rumor to rest for me about what's going to happen with the existing Millard branch? I don't understand where people thought we were closing <laughs> that. Um, I think because we're working with Millard Public Schools and people keep saying the Millard property or the Millard branch. Um, so we've been trying to keep saying the new branch library and avoid the Millard name altogether. We are not closing anything Good. to open this 13th branch. Good. Hopefully that gets out there yes. now. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank no. Thank you again for reaching out. Uh, I know it's um, gets kind of lost because it's not direct supervision from us. But thanks for the report and look forward to next year. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank Very you. much appreciate this. Okay, with that, we'll go to item six, public hearing. Letter A is class 1-123031, license for beer, wine, steel spirits, uh, on sale only. For Taha and Vo, do, doing business as Premier Nails Bar at 18924 Evans Street, Suite 107, Omaha, Nebraska, Douglas County, 68022. This is um, held over, and I'm assuming everything's good. So with that, we, the public hearing is still uh, open for this. Any um, comment from anybody from the public during the public hearing? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. What's the will of the board? Second. Motion by Commissioner Borgs and seconded by Commissioner Morgan. Yes, please, Commissioner. Uh, the first delay, as I recall, had to do with not adequate noti notification being sent out to neighbors. I'm just looking for some reassurance that this was done. I'm assuming time. it's done. No one contacted me saying that uh, I had difficulty. The NS County Clerk, um, we had uh, 
documentation from the applicant that she sent something out on October 3rd to, uh, and then there was a list of um, uh, neighbors that she had sent it to. Thank so, you, Dan. I appreciate that. Yep. Okay. With that, please vote. Motion passes seven to zero. You're good. All right. Um, item seven is committee discussion and action. Letter A is the finance committee. Item one is the budget report. Commissioners Boyle and Morgan. Think there's anything that Joe Lorenz uh, so has presented. Okay. Uh, just just note. Um, I just want to reiterate the first meeting in November. We're gonna do that for present. We're gonna do the. Um, criminal justice presentation just for the cost under the budget uh, area. So I just Good. note that. We'll note at the next meeting, but uh, I just want to note that to Great. Hear everybody here in the public. Um, with that, uh, Commissioner Kavanaugh. Yes. Um, the Health and Human Services Committee will be holding a hearing on the 24th of October uh, at 10 a.m. on the ninth floor um, regarding the general assistance update. Thank you. Um, we'll go to item G, which is human resources. Item one is the weekly personnel report for civil service. That is as submitted. Um, item two is the legislative um, issues. Um, there was a meeting last Tuesday, and I'm assuming Commissioner Borgson will have a follow-up meeting for that, which uh, to be on the lookout for the board for de legislative priorities. But let me note um, just the... Um, Nebraska Association of County Officials had a legislative meeting last uh, Wednesday. Uh, Marcos and I went to McCook for that meeting. Um, one of the interesting points there, of all the things said, of course, uh, it was in western Nebraska, two western senators, one with, I think, Senator Hughes, and the other one was Senator Groney. And um, the thing that stuck out to me in the meeting, and I'd be and I kind of see where it goes, is that how it may affect us here locally. Um, is Senator Groney mentioned um, hospitals and charity. Now, I don't know where he's going to go with this, but the example that he gave is um, the hospitals being listed as charities and nonprofit, but you don't see churches and nonprofits sending um, uh, debt collectors and bill payments after people for a charity. So um, I don't know where he's going to go with that, but there's probably going to be some digging on that, and, it, and it's all in the context of this property uh, tax discussion. So, um, you know, everything that was said was normal, but that, that to me stuck out. So I don't know where that goes, uh, but I just wanted to note that uh, on the record uh, for us here. Um, Commissioner Moore. I was just going to say, uh, if we can, let's start to look at the date for getting uh, breakfast with our state senators. Hopefully soon that we can uh, kind of have some different dates that we can attend. Okay. Uh, so we can all try to be there for that. It's so important, and I think cabinet at UNO alum or one other we place, about uh, the breakfast. The no empty thing. pots place, so that's yeah, what we talked about. Okay. That's great. Note that. Thank you, Chris. All right. Commissioner Boyle. I um, would like us to uh, uh, take the uh, our position, I believe it is, to have the state take over criminal justice expenses. I, I know that's a big item every time I bring it up. I, you know this, that the county officials roar approval when I say let's take over the county, you know, the, the, the criminal justice. I think we ought to really uh, be pushing that and see that uh, I don't know that, um, uh, and I understand that how conservative those senators are that you mentioned, but. Uh, I think it would make a great deal of sense because they're, all the things they're, their counties are paying for are the same things that we're paying for. Uh, and we all understand, I think, that we're a child of the state, uh, but, you know, we're, we're riding away in the back seat someplace. Um, anyway, I'd like to see the NACO, Nebraska Association of County Officials, adopt a position that's of take, the state taking over the uh, criminal justice costs. And uh, the other thing is I ran into the speaker of uh, the legislature, uh, Speaker Shear and his wife, at a... Um, uh, Durham Museum event, and I had a chance to talk to him, and uh, I asked them about, um, you know, coming to Omaha for a meeting and, and really getting beefed up on what's happening in the metropolitan area, 
And I suggested to him, I said, what do you think about an overnight visit if you came and, and bringing senators? And uh, he smiled broadly and he said, that, that'd be better than a one-day deal. So I think we need to figure out, uh, and I'd be glad to try to work on it, to get a sponsor uh, to pay for that, uh, for the hotel accommodations and uh, whatever else. But we need to do it, I think, around a time when there's some event like the World's, College World Series or uh, something going on here, the Olympic swim trials or something that would be of real interest to them and let the spouses, uh, men or women, do their thing too. Kind of like a, we've all experienced when we've gone on conventions and things where you have tours or something available. I think it would make a big difference and we could, you know, push in some uh, visits to corrections and the youth center, wherever that is, and, and the judicial system and show our offices that are overcrowded and, and also what we're working with on the poor and the, and the, the detox center, the whole thing. I think it'd give it whatever we want to focus on. So if you don't mind, I think I'm going to pursue that. And if I can find a sponsor, um, uh, I'll bring it back to you and see what, uh, what you folks think. But I, I think it would be useful. He was very, thought it would be a good idea. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with following up on it. Okay. Just, I think, note the, it, 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 hopefully circumstances change to some degree. I, I think we tried to do that uh, maybe last year. And I remember having it in the Casios and just conversation with, uh, with our lobbyists. When we got to that point, they were getting feedback from some of them that they weren't interested in the overnight. Yeah. So, well, we'll see how it goes. If they're not interested, obviously we won't do it. Yep. Okay. Um, Thanks. Any we'll other? We're staying at Jim's house anyway. So. <laughs> any other legislative concerns, issues? All righty. Uh, with that, we do have a need for an executive session for uh, labor negotiations and litigation. Uh, so with that, we reserve the right to end into executive session in order to protect the public's interest with respect to discussion regarding labor negotiation and litigation. I don't know if it's labor negotiation. Uh, uh, there's a motion by Commissioner Kraft going to executive session, seconded by Commissioner Boyle. Uh, please vote. And again, we're going in for labor negotiations, litigations. I'm, ass I'm assuming that's what that is. Commissioner Borgeson. Motion passes 7 to 0.
you yeah. did. Yeah, you voted yes. That is correct, yeah. Are you a yes, Commissioner Boyle? Yeah, okay. I gotcha, yes. Motion passes all commissioners present voting, yes.